Hi guys, my name is Stephanie, and if you are wondering how to put a rug on stairs, I have 10 super helpful tips that will help you get the job done, and it will look fantastic too. So this stair makeover has been on my to-do list for years and years. I've been putting up with some scrap carpet that I put on the stairs 10 years ago when I took off the old carpeting to find out that the cheap filler that the builder used on my stairs made it way too wide to use with a regular rug runner. So instead of trying to figure out what to do, I threw on some old carpet and now I'm finally fixing the problem with three by five rugs instead of the typical rug runner width, which is around two feet wide. So tip number one is to use three by five rugs on your stairs if they're extra wide like mine. Tip number two is to use painter's tape on one side of the stairs to mark where you want that carpet to hit as you're moving up or down the stairs, whichever direction you're installing. So mine is about four inches away from the wall so that my rug is centered on those top steps that are the thinnest in that run of stairs. Okay, moving on to tip number three, and that is to buy actual carpet padding to use underneath the rug on your stairs. So the carpet padding is gonna give the thickness and the softness that you need to make that carpet feel nice underfoot and it's also going to give it the perfect plushness or the perfect roundedness that people like when they look at these rug runners on stairs. So you can get this at Lowe's, Home Depot, or whatever your local hardware store is that you like. It's usually on the shelf next to the carpet. This is a 6x9 foam carpet pad. It was way more than enough to do the upper and lower part of my stairs. All you're really going to be covering is the tread itself that you walk on. I'll show you that in a second. In this part of the video, I am hanging my carpet, my rug runner, about an inch off the side of that carpet pad so that I can cut along the edge of the other side and make sure that I get my carpet pad about an inch less wide than my rug. It just looks really nice if it's a slightly smaller than the rug itself. And then of course it's not showing. Tip number four is to cut that carpet pad so that it ends about where that curve in the front of your step is. That'll give it the perfect rounded edge on your steps without having any weird lumps. And when you're installing that carpet pad, make sure that you place staples evenly across every bit of that carpet pad so that it is held evenly in place and it doesn't receive any pressure from foot traffic and weird spots and start to rip on you later on. All right, tip number five might be a little weird. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anyone else do this, but I sew down the edge of the border that's gonna be going across the step. I only want the border showing on the sides of the rug runner. So I'm using one of my upholstery needles. It's a curved upholstery needle that I like to use for jobs like this and a really thick upholstery type thread. So go for one of the thicker threads that you can find on Amazon or in a sewing store, or whatever, wherever you go. So the border on this rug isn't very thick and I found that flipping it over and sewing it down looked a lot better than cutting it off and then trying to work around that cut edge. You could also, I guess, cut it off if you've got a really thick one, and then fold it over and sew that cut edge down so it looks prettier. Okay, here is that edge that I just sewed down. I'm about to install it, but before, let's do tip number six, and that is to use a staple gun with power. So I'm using my battery-operated Ryobi. I think it's around $70, $77. It is a hand saver. I used to use a cheap $12 mechanical staple gun and it would destroy my hand with any project that I used it on. So this thing is a game changer. I love it. There's absolutely no pain involved. So grab one of these cheaper staple guns if you can. It will make the job so much better. The key to making a rug look great on your stairs is to make sure you don't have any staples showing. So it's always safest to pick a rug that has a little bit of a pile so that it's puffed up a bit and it hides the staples inside of it. And also multicolored rugs are great because again, it's going to hide staples. If you have a solid color rug, those staples are going to stand out on your rug way better than it does on a rug with a pile and multicolors. If you do have a solid color rug or a low pile rug and you're having a hard time hiding those staples, you could try two tricks. So one trick I tried was using fingernail polish to paint the that top of my staples, a color that would look pretty good with my rug and wouldn't be so obvious. You could also try Sharpies to paint the top of those um, staples before you install them. So tip number seven was my tricks for hiding the staples on your rug runner. Moving on to tip number eight is where to put the staples or where not to put the staples, really. 
So I found that if you put the staples on the border, they're really obvious. They stand out super well on the border. Again, it's it's a it's a solid color border and it does not have a pile. So the staple just is really obviously sitting on top of the border. So avoid the border, staple just inside of the edge of your border so that you're still holding down the edges of your rug runner, but you're just not on top of the border itself. I also like to go over all of my staples with a little tap of the hammer and make sure that they are as tight and flush with the wood as possible so that you never, ever, ever feel a staple on your rug runner. Here's another place where you never, ever want to put a staple. It's right over the carpet pad. So see here how it creates a dimple in my rug runner? That's no good. So when I'm work putting staples on the tread, the part that you walk on, I keep all of the staples on the side again, just inside the border so that they're not visible, or along the very back. Here's a quick look at how obvious that staple looks over top of the border. So that's why I never put it on the border. It's hidden perfectly in the pile, but not on the border. All right, tip number nine is needle nose pliers. So that's what I'm using here in my hand. So I know they make staple removers, but those needle nose pliers are great because that tiny little end, that pointed end is great at digging out staples in your rugs that are hard to get to. Okay, moving on to tip number 10. That is to start and end your stair runner or your rug on your stairs wherever you want to. So some people like to start that um, stair runner at the top of a riser, at the top of the stairs, and move down. So as you can see here, I started my rug at the back of a tread or the step that you step on. I like to have that painted reveal at the top of the stairs. No, neither way is wrong. Use whichever way you want to do. Now that we've gone over my 10 tips for how to install a rug on stairs, let me tell you how much I spent on these rugs. So my three by five rugs cost me about $47 each. I bought them on Amazon. I've been finding tons of great rugs on Amazon for the last few years. I have a blog post with a bunch of my favorite ones in it. So if you want to check that out, check the description of the video and head over to my blog and I've got a ton of them listed there. And in case you're wondering, I do have rugs that I'll be installing on those landings next. I just wanted to make this video before I had house guests arriving. So I'll come back to that and do the same thing on those landings. All right, be sure to ask any questions in the comments below. I always try to answer questions and that's it. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. Have a great day.